everyone, how you doing? It's Umpman Joe, and today we're going to go over a drill which you can use to help improve your reaction time when you play Call of Duty and some other first-person shooter games. Now, we're actually going to run this drill on the Showtime map off the new Call of Duty map pack Nemesis. Now, if you don't have this map pack, don't worry about it. There are other maps that you can use within Call of Duty, whether it be on Ghost or any of the other games like Black Ops 2 or Modern Warfare 3. Um, but let's get into the setup of how we're going to set up our class and what we're going to try to accomplish when we do this drill. Now the reason we're using the Showtime map because it's a very small map. Now like I said, if you don't have this map pack, don't worry about it. This drill will also work really well on Strike Zone from the original game release. Now we're going to do this in a private match on Team Deathmatch. Put your time limit and unlimited, the score limit at whatever you want, and you can leave every other setting the way it is. Now once you've done that, go put 5 to 10 enemy bots wherever you feel comfortable and put them on the recruit setting and we'll discuss why later. Then we need to set up our class. You want to use an SMG with whatever attachments you like to use and then use ready up, sleight of hand, unlimited sprint, quick draw, and scavenger. And then put your strike packages specialist and put any extra settings that you want on there. The whole purpose to this drill is to improve our reaction time. This way when we're in a multiplayer game and running around and encounter an enemy suddenly, we can win more of those one-on-one -on -one gun battles. Now we're going to do this by running around the map in circular patterns, always sprinting. You don't want to be walking around creeping or looking around corners. You want to run around so that this way you can encounter enemies suddenly. Now if you start crouching, walking around, or just hiding in corners, you're not going to do anything to help improve your reaction time. We want to suddenly encounter enemies and then make it a natural instinct to do something, whether it be drop shot them, kill them with the gun, or even knife them. Two of the things that I have a hardest time with as I run around and encounter enemies is knifing them because they're close or drop shotting so that I can get myself that extra time. So you can see one of the biggest things that I work on when I run this drill is drop shotting. And the way I do that is every single time I see an enemy, I drop. This way, when I drop, I fire, and I have the extra second or two. Now, every time we kill someone, we don't necessarily need to drop shot. But if you practice doing it every single kill, it'll become second nature when you actually need to do it. The other thing that I have a hard time with is knifing people. There's many times where all of a sudden I run up, I encounter someone, and I try to raise my gun up, and I really only needed to knife them. So as you run around, if you encounter an enemy on a corner, think about knifing them first and then firing. You'll be amazed at the difference in your game if you could make it a natural instinct to knife people. Now, I know a lot of people will start calling you panic knifing, but you're not panic knifing. You're doing it on purpose. To me, a panic knifer is somebody who accidentally hits it. We're trying to train our brain to think first about knifing when we encounter somebody in a close quarter situation like that. So as you run around, what you need to be going through your head is like, oh, he's really close, let me knife him. Or let me drop shot. Now you can also use this so that you can do jump shotting. Now in that situation there, I really should have knifed him. But again, that is a skill that I'm still working on. I'm still working on being able to knife somebody as an instinct. But again, just run around and constantly kill people. You never want to stop sprinting. If we don't stop sprinting, it's going to help us to naturally react quicker as we encounter enemies. It's going to basically teach our brain to act first, then think. Now, as far as sensitivity on our controllers, what you want to do is actually, I'm running with a 5 sensitivity and the vibration off. Believe it or not, the vibration can throw off your aim. If you haven't tried it, try it. My aim improved tremendously when I turned the vibration motors off, because every time I would fire the gun, all of a sudden the controller would shake and my aim would just come off a little bit. Now as I'm running this drill in this demonstration, I'm actually practicing all of these different techniques, but you can use it to practice just one at a time. For example, you could run around and not worry about knifing or drop shotting or jump shotting. Run the drill one time where you're just running around and trying to raise the gun and kill people. Run another drill where you're running around and constantly just try to knife people when you turn corners and see them and then do the same thing for both drop shotting and jump shotting. As you get good at each technique, try combining them as I'm doing here. Now you will notice that I've hardly ever jump shot. That's because it's probably the thing that I have the hardest time with. So as I try to jump shot people, my aim gets thrown off. 
If I started running around jump shotting, you would all start laughing at me because my aim gets so bad I can't even hit anything. The reason I focus mostly on drop shotting and on knifing is because I feel there are things that are most beneficial in a real life match. When I started doing these drills on a semi-daily basis, my game immediately improved. I was able to go from always being negative on small maps like Strike Zone to going even and now most of the time even positive. Now let's get into what I'm sure you all want to know. Why the various settings? Well, first of all for map size. I like this because it's a smaller map. The smaller the map, the better. I used to always run this drill on Strike Zone, but this map is even smaller and it makes it much more challenging. You can see that as I'm running around, I'm only running currently with five enemy bots, yet I'm always coming across an enemy. You want to almost run upon them as if you're scared. You know, having them surprise you makes you click quicker and react quicker. It's going to help you to improve your muscle memory to react first, then think. Now, for recruit bots. I'm using recruit bots because basically all you want is target practice. You want something that's running around, that's mobile, that you can come across and you can kill. You don't want to use the harder bots like the normal level or the hardened but level because all they're going to do is kill you more and it's going to throw off your rhythm. You want to develop a nice rhythm as you're running around killing people. The only thing I like about the recruit bots is in my experience the recruit bots tend to camp more. As I'm running around you're going to see that a lot of times there's a recruit bot sitting in the corner or laying down or using some type of an LMG. So if you have bots that are trying to camp in some of the areas it helps to improve our awareness. It helps us to, as we're running around, always thinking there could be a guy in that corner. Just like this guy. He's sitting there in the corner, but because I'm trying to improve my awareness, it helps me to constantly keep my eyes open and run around looking for him. Now, SMG. That's an obvious one. We're trying to be quick. We need a gun that raises to sights quickly. We need something for close quarter action. Now, as far as perks... Ready up is another obvious one. Because we're running around sprinting, we need something that's going to help us to raise the gun a little bit quicker from sprinting. Slide a hand is because as we're running around, we want to be able to reload quicker. Unlimited sprint is because, again, the whole purpose of this drill is to constantly be sprinting. Quick draw is so that we can bring our sights quicker. And scavenger is because we can, this way we never have to worry about running out of bullets. Lastly, why unlimited time and 100 kills? Well, you don't have to run 100 kills. The only reason I set up for that is because I like to run this drill so that I get 100 kills and average somewhere maybe 30 to 35 deaths. If I do any worse than that, I'll run the drill again. But if we do it for 100 kills, it helps to improve our muscle memory. Now let's talk about this map real quick. I really enjoy this map. It is hectic, and I can tell you in a multiplayer environment, you die a lot, and I mean a lot but it's still a lot of fun to play. And I can tell you, Infinity Ward seems to have put a lot of time, effort, and thought into making the map. The Field Order is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. You're either gonna earn a bunch of sentry guns, some gas, a bunch of care packages being dropped, or possibly even all three. It's all random. Now, I did earn the Field Order earlier in the game, but I waited to the very end to throw it, and we're gonna end the video with seeing what we get. The other thing that's really cool is your normal announcer, whether it be the stock announcer, Snoop Dogg, or the drill sergeant, is gone. The game is actually based in a killing arena, as if you're at a football game or a sporting event. And every time you do something, you hear the announcer over the loudspeaker announce what happened, whether it be you shoot them, stab them, hit them in the head, or get them in the back. There are really cool commentaries as you're listening, and it's a nice change of pace from the normal things that you hear. The only time you hear your regular announcer is if you earn some type of a kill streak or a care package or as the game is getting ready to end. Now let's call in the care package and see what we get. I found that this is the best room to drop it. If you drop it out here in the main arena, you'll get killed before you can even pick it up. So throw it in that room, kind of run around, check for everybody like this guy sitting right here, and then go back and pick it up. And you can see I pick it up, but as soon as I turn around, I died. So what we'll do is we'll call it in, we'll go out, we'll look at the big screen and see what we've earned. Now up on this big screen, you'll see a slot machine come up, and I earned the sentry guns. And what happens is a bunch of turrets throughout the center of the map open up for about 10 seconds and kill everybody out there in the middle. I hope this drill helps you to improve your reaction times so the next time that you're playing and stumble across an enemy in a surprise situation, you're able to win more of those one-on-one -on -one gun battles. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button on the bottom, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And until next time, happy gaming!